Hi, Sarah here, and today I'm going to talk to you about the physiology of the nephron. In the last video, I spoke about the anatomy of the kidney and the nephron, so now we're going to talk about what happens. So here's a quick schematic of the nephron itself. The blood vessels that bring blood in are called the afferent arterioles, and then those that leave are the efferent arterioles, and this big ball of capillaries is called the glomerulus. Now this structure acts as a kind of sieve in combination with this um, yellow cup, which is the Bowman's capsule. And when the fluid comes in, well, when the blood comes into the afferent arteriole, it's at quite high pressure. And so a bunch of the fluid and its constituents passes through this structure, just like a sieve. Some things pass through and some things don't. The main things that don't pass through are blood cells and large proteins unless there's some kind of pathology. But other than that, a lot of things do pass through. So sodium ions and chloride ions, which I'll just refer to as NaCl, because they always pass together in this process, come through, as well as potassium ions. Also, of course, H2O, as it's the main liquid component of plasma and of the filtrate. Other things that pass through are glucose and amino acids, creatinine, and of course urea, which is the main thing we want to get rid of in this process. So you're probably thinking, this is quite a lot of useful stuff, why are we getting rid of it? Surely we need it back. And you would be correct. And the next process that actually occurs in the nephron is reabsorption of most of the useful stuff that we've just got rid of. The next part of the nephron is called the proximal convoluted tubule, and this is where the majority of reabsorption occurs. In actual fact, 65% of the sodium chloride and potassium and the H2O that we just squirted out in filtration are reabsorbed, and 100% of the glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed, unless there's any kind of pathology. Ninety percent of the bicarbonate ions are reabsorbed, but we don't want to ex excrete too much because we could end up with an acidosis. So, to try and explain what I mean by reabsorption, because it can be a confusing principle, basically there are capillaries completely wrapped around the nephron, and when we reabsorb something, it means it goes back out of the filtrate and into the blood. So, absorption is the process of something passing into the blood, just like in the digestive system, but this is reabsorption because we've just lost it in filtration, so it needs to be reabsorbed. Something else that occurs here is called secretion, and there, there's not as much stuff passing in this direction, but it's where um, substances from the blood pass into the nephron. Uric acid and organic acids pass in this way. So the next part of the nephron is the loop of Henle, and to explain this it's best to start with the ascending limb, even though this is further down the line. So an important aspect of this is the fact that its walls are impermeable, and this will become clear in a minute. So what happens is sodium chloride is actively transported out of the thick ascending limb and into the interstitial fluid between the loops of Henle. This means that the water potential is lower here, and so the fluid or the H2O that's passing in the descending limb leaves the descending limb and enters the interstitial fluid down its concentration gradient by osmosis. This means that at the bottom of the limb, the fluid in the nephron, the filtrate, is really concentrated. So when that passes into the thick ascending limb, H2O you'd expect to try and go in by osmosis. But that's the genius of it, because this wall is impermeable to water. And as a result, we get this really concentrated fluid continuing in the nephron. The H2O and NaCl that pass into the interstitial fluid is reabsorbed into the blood. This makes up 25% of the NaCl and H2O that was lost in the filtrate. The next part of the nephron is the distal convoluted tubule. A little bit more reabsorption occurs here too. 
we have got reabsorption of about 5% of the water and about 5% of the sodium chloride and potassium, which was lost in the filtrate initially. So you can see that it's starting to add up 65% in the proximal convoluted tubule, 25% in the loop of Henle, and now 5% in the distal convoluted tubule. We also get fine tuning of hydrogen and potassium here. The next part is the collecting duct. Here we have excretion, but we also have a little bit of reabsorption, about another 5% of the H2O and NaCl here. Excretion is the final process in this um, sequence of physiological events. And the things which pass out are some water and sodium chloride, which, because we haven't reabsorbed all of it, otherwise we'd just be urinating dust. Some potassium and bicarbonate ions are also lost. And creatinine, which I haven't mentioned in a while. If we look back, creatinine was something that passed out in the filtrate, but at no other step in the nephron has it been reabsorbed, which is why creatinine is a really good measure of the functioning of the glomerulus. Another thing that's excreted, of course, is urea. And so the fluid passes into the bladder and exits. There are a couple of things which can affect all of this. One of them is aldosterone, which functions at the distal convoluted tubule to increase water reabsorption. A similar function is had by antidiuretic hormone, which acts on the collecting duct to increase water reabsorption. So there we have it. That's my overview of the physiology of the nephron. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you haven't checked out the anatomy video already, have a little look. It's the previous one on my channel. And I look forward to getting back to you with more videos. Please check out my website, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and subscribe to my YouTube channel.